Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the kinematics of torpedoes and kind of going a little bit into the aspect of shots as well as some of the strategy involved with them. So what I have today is I have ourselves a handy dandy PLA 97 one M Akula number two. This is a Shuka B over in Russia. Pretty solid submarine. It does uh, some pretty standard things that you're used to nuclear submarines. Do about 35 knots. It's got a pretty good collection of different sensors on board. Has four torpedo tubes of the 533 millimeter variety, and it has some of these monster 650 millimeter tubes as well. Those are the anti-carrier tubes back during the Cold War. Now, what I want to show off today is just kind of the impact that you can have as far as picking the right angle to fire a torpedo and keeping in mind the kinematic versus, you know, automatic sort of range of these weapons. So what I have right now is I have myself this handy dandy ultra large crude carrier. It's one of my favorite targets for these purposes because it takes a lot of abuse. When I say a lot of abuse, I mean, if you take two seconds, look at how many damage points it has. Yeah, it takes a lot to put this thing down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take some shots at this from different angles to see what happens. So the first shot I'm going to take is I'm going to take everybody's favorite beam shot. Uh, this is when you're going to try to hit at the 90%, basically 90 degree angle, almost perpendicular to the beam of the target itself. Those of you who are familiar with uh, World War II submarine games like your Silent Hunters, you know this shot amazing. The concept, of course, of the beam shot is you're trying to hit dead in the center of the ship. So what will happen is the ship itself, once it hogs and then sags, it'll basically snap itself in two and you'll have two very awkward looking ships that don't uh, float very well. So we're going to try that shirt first and uh, see exactly what happens. Go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. So we know that our torpedo is on board right now. Uh, these are 50 knot torpedoes if you fire them directly. If you choose to fire them as what they call the kinematic range, you get a 35 knot torpedo. On the flip side, at 12 nautical miles, you get a 50 knot torpedo. So you're probably saying, okay, this makes sense so far. And then why on earth is the range in this thing only five nautical miles? That's going to be the you cannot escape from me range. That's what this red ring is. Believe it or not, even though this target is completely out of range right now, I can still take a shot on it. As a matter of fact, I can even predict where I need to aim in order to actually hit it. So if we know, for example, that our torpedo will do 50 knots if we're less than 12 nautical miles away, I can see my target here is seven and a half nautical miles away. So what we want to do is we want to predict where we'd have to aim in order to basically get a free hit on it. Again, we're trying to hit the perpendicular here. So if he's doing 10 knots and my torpedoes are doing about 50 knots, we need to find the point in space where the two torpedoes would hit each other. Now, in the old days, you'd have to do this the nasty way. You'd have to sit there and crunch the math. But the good news is in this game, it does all that math for you. As a matter of fact, if I order up a manual launch, you can see I'm already ready to shoot. Notice I put my weapons on hold so we don't get any auto launches here. So what we need to do is we need to optimize our shot so that we hit him right when he gets right there. That is exactly five nautical miles away from us. So if we're traveling 50 knots and it's five nautical miles away, that's going to take six minutes to get to the target. So we need to fire so that the torpedo itself gets there six minutes before he gets there. So the other thing we know is we know the fact that he needs to travel to get into this position. He's doing 10 knots and we're going to be doing 50 knots. So how far along are we going to have to be? Well, if you're doing 10 knots and divided by 60, you're going to be doing 0.67 for six minutes. Exactly one nautical mile away is when we're going to have to take our shot. So I'm actually going to put a mark right here. And we'll make a nice Jurassic Park reference, of course, for anybody who's interested. Control R, shoot ha! And now everything is ready to go. So again, we're trying to hit this ship perfectly on the beam. That looks like a pretty good point. Again, we want to wait just a minute, just a minute. Pause. Okay. So we're going to fire now. If my calculations are somewhat correct, we're going to be aiming basically right here so that when the torpedo actually arrives at the ship, it's going to crack it right in the center. And lock on, fire, load up two, and fire. Torpedoes away. Oh, I was close. I was close. Okay, now this is going to be a perfect beam shot. Look at this. Folks who played a World War II submarine games are going to be jealous how accurate my shot was. Actually, if you take a look, my um, estimation was decent. I think my only mistake here was account of the fact that uh, it took a little while to actually launch the torpedoes. Whoop, first one hit. And second one hit. Beautiful. Pause. Let's go ahead and take a look at how much damage that nice beam hit did. So um, it's on fire, it's flooding, and its systems are screwed, and its damage is about 6.8%. If we go to damage control here, you can see we took out its propulsion completely. Its bridge is okay, its rudder is okay. This thing is dead. Again, this was a mission kill, and that fire is pretty nasty. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and speed up time a little bit here and see if the fire gets worse. 
Uh, it's getting worse. We may have just destroyed this thing in a single shot. Oh, she's gone. Oh, look at the fire. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Game over. Nice. So you can see that against something like a ULCC, two little tiny torpedoes is more than enough to crack that thing. So you're sitting there going, okay, what about the other aspects we can take the shot? Well, let's try everybody's no shot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my a little handy dandy cooler again, park it over here. I'm going to go ahead and face it in this direction. And this time we're going to go ahead and take a no shot. So again, we're going to try to hit it right on the nosy. You know, or basically put a torpedo through the front windshield there. Go ahead and lock onto it. Remember, we're using kinematic launches. By the way, to do kinematic launches, you have to actually allow the kinematic launches by coming down here. And you can see I've got it enabled, which gives me the ability to go ahead and fire these. Remember, if I'm less than 12 nautical miles away, I can fire a 50 knot torpedo. So he's more than close enough. I'll go ahead and select two. Service. <laughs> All right. So what happens when you nail somebody right on the nose? Let's take a look here. Torpedoes coming in. Torpedoes. He's not even going to know he's about to get hit. Boom, boom. All right, let's see what that did. Again, this is a no shot. Anybody who's played a Silent Hunter knows how difficult these are. So that was a very clean hit also. Let's take a look at damage control. You can see we've uh, wrecked the propulsion again. We've done quite a bit of damage to our data links. Our bridge and CIC is good. And we are both flooding as well as completely on fire. I'll go ahead and speed up time. Let's see if things get worse. That fire is pretty bad. Oh, geez. We're dead in the water. Now we've got to fight that fire. Oh, oh fire is catching. Fire is catching. Oh boy, this is gonna end poorly for this poor ship. Oh, whoa, we're winning against the fire. Come on, beat the fire, beat the fire, beat. Hey, we did it. <laughs> so you can see that when we do a nose shot, again, there's a little bit of random probability in here. That was a good hit. Now, surprisingly, we actually destroyed propulsion, which is very unusual. So chances are what actually happened here is our torpedoes went under the nose of the ship and exploded a little bit further down. Remember, these are very long ships. Now let's try everybody's, oh geez, this isn't going to work shot. And we're going to go for a tail shot here. So I'm going to go right over here. Go ahead and put our shuka right there. Point it in this direction. Go ahead and wait until we reacquire that particular ship. There it is. These are tough shots too, because he's running away from your weapon, which means if you fire it outside of the good range, which is against this red, red ring right here, there's a good chance he'll basically outrun the torpedoes. Now, a hit like this, I expect to basically total his rudder. Sometimes you get engineering, sometimes you don't. Really depends on how clean of a hit you get. So let's go ahead and switch over to him. He's enjoying his little drive here. Da, 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 just delivering some oil. Boom, boom. All right. So we have a tremendously large fire instantly. Because again, think about where the back of the ship is and what's usually back there. Take a look at my damage control. Okay, I'm, you're always, always going to take off the navigation radar. All right, okay, communications data links are pretty nasty. The diesels are wrecked. So it completely annihilated propulsion, but it did nothing to the rudder, which actually really surprises me. So he's going to sit there slowing down because uh, he's got no diesels anymore. Notice, by the way, the only hit that caused flooding was the beam hit. So he's slowing down. He's slowing down. He's getting the fire under control. He's getting the fire under control. All right, he's parked. Is he going to put the fire out before it sinks him? I will do not. Ah, got it. So you can actually see that was the least effective shot we've taken so far. So you're going, okay, I think I know where you're going with this. It seems to make perfect sense. You know, I get it. You know, take all that time to calculate it, get that nice clean shot against the merchant. Hey, it works great. What about if you go against a warship? Now, this is where things get interesting very quickly. Uh, to my north right here, of course, I got a 295 kind of helping me out here. We actually have ourselves a destroyer. And this destroyer is uh, going to demonstrate the fallacy in thinking you're going to be able to get a beam hit on a destroyer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Shuka here. I'm going to go ahead and park it right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. This is in Los Tremene, in case you're curious. We're actually going to have to go down a little bit to shallow. Because if we stay up there, he'll probably see us and put a torpedo through our front windshield, which we don't want. So what happens when you try for the beam shot on a warship? especially a nice modern destroyer. I'm not talking something like a Kravak, which is, you know, or even an Oliver Hazard Parry, where basically you can shoot it anytime, anywhere, because it can't hear your torpedo. You can see his sonar range is massive. So any torpedo launches in the sonar range will get you automatically targeted with basically rocket torpedoes. So kind of keep that in mind. So ideally, what you really want to be doing here is you want to be positioning yourself so you're just outside of his sonar range when he passes ahead of you. So that way he doesn't accidentally um, basically detect you when you fire. If he detects you when you fire, i uh, got bad news. He's going to be able to plop, like I said, a rocket torpedo on top of you. Instead, he's just going to accidentally hear your torpedoes when they start getting close. So speed up time here. <laughs> You'll never know what hit him.
All right, same technique here. Obviously, we're going to be doing uh, basically one of the nice automatic launches, the non-kinematic range ones, which gets us all 50 knots of torpedo. So we just have to wait until he gets into the danger zone. Keep in mind, he's doing 10 knots here, so he's making an awful lot of noise. So let's see here. Uh, we're about 4.7 nautical miles away. He's a solid, let's see here, 3 nautical miles away. We're going to be doing the same shot here. So we're going to be waiting until he's about 1 nautical mile away. I'll go ahead and leave myself a little note. That's going to be my launching position right there. So speed up time just a little bit. And pause. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do, whoop, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Go ahead and do my classic little launch here. We're going to go give him two. Now, this is a perfect, perfect, perfect beam shot here. All right, speed up time. My torpedoes are on the way. Whoop, did you see what he did? <laughs> he turned around. Now, any good destroyer captain would immediately do this. Again, if you all play this game at all, you probably have done this about a thousand times. First chance you get, you basically go ahead and fire two torpedoes in that general direction. Again, down the beam. Ah, I was actually able to hear my launch there. That's a bad thing, because that means um, I'm dead. So the torpedoes are now going to chase him down. Keep in mind, these torpedoes are doing 50 knots. Keep in mind, he's doing 32 knots. He outran my torpedoes. So that was hopeless. There's no way on earth I was ever going to get that shot. Now, on the flip side, let's go ahead and tweak things around just a teeny tiny bit. Go ahead and reset everything back the way it was just a moment ago. Go ahead and grab my little handy dandy shuka again. Speed up time. And this time we're going to get a little bit closer. We're going to go down to shallow because if we go too high, he's just going to pop us pretty much first chance he gets. So now we're going to take a very risky shot here. We're basically going to trap him and get him with the beam. All right. Lock on to him. A couple of torpedoes. Now in the real world, the moment you do this, watch what happens from his perspective. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. Oh, and there he is. Fire two torpedoes. Boop, 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 boop. And he's going to plop two torpedoes on the bearing right there. And you can see it basically comes a war from our torpedoes versus their torpedoes. And of course, he's going to turn around. He's going to start getting as much speed as possible. But guess what's going to get catch up to him? <laughs> guess what caught up to us? So you can see immediately how that did not work. So um, if we're going to do a beam shot against a warship, you had better hope they can't hear you. So let's try a different shot. Let's go ahead and grab our Ashuka again. And we're going to go up here, put him right here. We're going to go for a no shot this time. This is actually one of my favorite shots against a destroyer. Again, anybody who's played Silent Hunter back in the day has uh, done this shot about a thousand times. You look through your periscope, you look out the window, or the window, you know what I mean. You look out the periscope, next thing you know, there's a destroyer coming straight at you. You panic, you launch two torpedoes, and you cl cleanly hit him right on the nose. Now, the reason this is usually a good shot against destroyers is because when you take this shot, he's going to have to turn around to outrun your torpedo. The problem is when he goes to turn around, he's going to be wasting an enormous amount of energy and he's going to lose all his speed, giving your torpedoes plenty of time to get into range. So I'll go ahead and give him a pair. Eat that, eat that. As usual, he's going to be chugging along here, chugging along here, chugging along here. Just relaxing, nothing too, too scary. He's just kind of doing his thing, kind of doing his thing. Oh, and he's dead. Oh! Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. He is toast. Because again, it's very difficult for him to hear looking out the front. So now that's interesting because different sonar systems are going to have different sensitivities depending where you are. In this case, that not only hit him, it cleaned him out. He did not have a chance, but... But for the sake of experimentation, for the sake of proving my point, I'm going to go ahead and set the exact same thing up again. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow the destroyer down. So now when it takes its shot, or now when it gets shot at, I should say, we should be more specific, it's going to be less likely for it to not notice the incoming torpedo. There we go. Five knots is pretty darn slow. Okay, let's swing back over to here. Let's grab our handy dandy sub right here. We know exactly where he is. Get him into range, lock on, give him a pair. Boop, boop. What do we got? All right, switch back to the destroyer's perspective. He's not not cavitating, and we've already got a lock. Can we uh, at least fire something at him? Ooh, maybe we can do a bearing launch torpedo. Ah, it won't even let us do that. And there they are. We are just slightly out of range. Okay, now we're outrunning the torpedo. Notice that we had to turn around in order to avoid the torpedoes. And in this case, you can see the torpedoes actually got chewed up and spit out by, I ran out of energy. So you can see my Silver Romania basically outran him again. So again, if we're going to take a shot off the nose, if he's going that slow, he's just going to turn around and run. We can get him if he's moving a little faster, because then he's going to have less time to react. Okay, we'll take a look at one more shot here. And uh, this will be kind of my, one of the classic ways to disable, especially an escort. So I'm going to get my Shuka. 
And I'm going to go right into the baffles of this destroyer. And I'm actually going to slow the destroyer down a little bit here. Because if it goes full blast, this is basically going to be a cheap shot on my part. Not that all of these haven't been cheap shots. I mean, when you can teleport around the ocean, it makes it much easier to hit the other guy. All right, we'll speed up time a little bit. Yeah, he's not going to have any idea I'm behind him. So I'm floating right now in his baffles. What are his baffles? Well, let's give our second, just a second for our handy dandy destroyer to actually be identified here. His baffles are going to be the location directly behind him where he cannot see us. So I'm actually going to go pop ourselves up real quick because we're not going to be able to see him at this depth. Go, go, take a quick little peek, quick little peek. I need to identify him before I can take my shot here. And can we see him? There he goes, back down, back down, back down. Now, the reason I wanted to identify him is now if I click on him, I get information about the particular sub. Now, what you're noticing is that he's got his little outside ring here, which is going to be basically his sonar detection. He can detect us from every direction, which makes things a little bit tricky for a shot like this. But we are going to take a crack at it anyway and see exactly what happens. Plenty of uh, OECM, laser range finders, everything basically under the sun. And there's his hall sonar. Now watch this. So now we're going to go ahead and take our subby sub. What's a subby sub, right? Whoop, I don't want to do that. Go ahead and click him. He'll have two. Now let's see what happens from the perspective of the destroyer. So he's cruising. He's doing his thing. But notice, he can't hear behind him. So he's cruising. He's cruising. He's being nice and slow. He's listening for those pesky submarines. You know, I heard that there was a couple shukas that are basically doing a war gaming exercise. And I'm dead. Okay. So what is my point with all this? My point is you have to think about the type of target before you try to set up your torpedo shot. You can see from uh, all my demonstrations here just how effective you can take those shots if you take a little bit of time to get yourself in position. Keep in mind, I had the added bonus that I could basically see where everybody was at all times. And if I actually go over here, you probably notice, like I said, my duple of 95, which is doing a bang up job here of basically keeping an eye on everything here to make this scenario a little bit simpler for me. Another thing you want to think about too is trying to stay outside of the range of a return fire. Because again, if they're going to go ahead and take a shot back at you, you know, it's going to make things very, very tricky for us. The other thing you want to think about too is those kinematic versus your automatic launches, as I like to call them. Your automatic launches, you're firing at full speed for the torpedo, but you're limiting its range. Okay, one more thing I want to show you. And of course, everybody's sitting there going, that was rough. Well, what happens if we want to be able to compensate for something like that? So I'll show you a couple quick little tricks to kind of block that real fast. So I'm going to go back to my Silver Romania. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to do a course. See this angle right here that represents this little 90 degree slice? If we wanted to prevent ourselves from getting cheap shotted here, we would have to set ourselves up to have a course reversals every once in a while so that we can clear our baffles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set these up 1.7. It's going to be 90 degree turns. We're going to do 1.7, 90 degree turns, 1.7. 1.7. If you're wondering where I'm getting the 0.7 from, just take the tangent of 45 degrees. We'll go ahead down to 1.7. Again, we're going to keep these run around 1.7. And I kind of do 1.7. That looks good to me. That should get him uh, turning around quite a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and order him to avoid cavitation, which is going to slow him down a little tiny bit. But again, it's not going to do anything too crazy. All right, let's swing back to us. We'll go back to uh, shallow. We don't want to accidentally get spotted. All right, let's see if we can sneak up on this guy and take that cheap shot. Okay, so right now we're gonna have to go pretty darn quick in order to catch up to this guy. Cause like right now he's doing about eight knots. If we don't do eight knots, we'll never actually be able to catch up to him. So I'm actually gonna slide this sucker over to, we'll do 10 knots to keep up with him. There we go. So that way we can slowly begin to overtake him. Now I'm noticing now that he's got this weird little oblique angle on him. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take my typical shot here. And let's see what happens. There's my oblique shot, it's looking pretty clean. Oh, did you notice? As soon as he took that right turn, he spotted them and immediately jacked his speed up and started zipping away. And boom, boom, boom. And now we've got a very angry Salvadormania, which can probably track us down and do all sorts of nasty damage to us. Yeah, see, it already knows where we are, but unfortunately, it already got clunked. So you can see that is one method to do it. Another technique that I've seen that works really, really well, that's a kind of a fun way to do it. Let me go ahead and reopen everything real fast. Switch back to Grin. Actually, I should have switched back to Rud. Another really cool strategy is if you're going to do the little ziggy zags. Again, these zigzags, you can't make them too big, but if you make them too small, obviously, go ahead and we'll do a four and a half mile zigzag this time. Is what you'll do is you'll do something like this. So we have our zigzag, but instead, I'm going to go straight. Now, 
You can see exactly what I'm doing here. Again, this is clearing your baffles. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a different ship. Um, Let's see here. I'm going to do a Grisha. These things are pretty darn classic. Grab myself a Grisha, which does not have the same sonar capability. It's not bad sonar. While I'm doing it, setting myself a little square wave here. And the concept here is that you're going to get the square wave to be opposite the other guy's square wave. So now if I go over to map settings real quick and I do, let's see here, plotted courses and I do all, you can see his square wave pretty cleanly. So I need to be doing that while he's doing that. So I can kind of do something like this. And he's going to take up quite a bit more room here. Where we're just doing everything we can to kind of clear that baffle. And now when he goes straight, I can go straight. So let's go ahead and go there. Of course, when he stops going straight, we're gonna go ahead and do our own little square. And basically you can set something up that looks a little bit like this against each other so that you're constantly clearing each other's baffles to prevent that accidental surprise torpedo that we didn't find out about. Let's go ahead and grab our sub and watch what happens with this one. Go ahead and grab this one real quick. We're gonna go this direction. Unpause, make sure we're not surfaced because that's a quick and easy way to get nailed. We don't wanna do that today if we can. Oh, look at that, we've already detected key details about the Grisha. Go ahead and move a little bit closer here. Woo, we wanna go kind of slow here. Creep. All right, speed up time a little tiny, tiny bit. Now notice the Grisha is beaming us at the same time as the Noise Flutter menu is basically going away from us. So now if I wanted to do something about this, I could fire at this one, but as soon as I do, he's going to pick up speed and he's basically going to outrun it. So now I fire a nice little torpedo spread. Well, that was actually a really clean beam shot. Switch to everybody else. Notice our Grisha has not detected him yet. It's not to say, oh, geez, he's going too fast. That's my mistake here. Shut down the cavitation. If you're going to cavitate, you're not going to be able to hear anything that's sneaking up on you like those angry torpedoes. Just, oh, there we go. Now notice he was able to see the torpedo being launched at him so that he now has the ability to respond to it. Ironically, did you see how he turned around and ran? He's running from something he can't actually see. Now, of course, since it is a Grisha, you know, we could turn around and start firing all sorts of good stuff in that direction, but we're not going to. As a matter of fact, this Grisha is about to get nailed. Is he? Boom. And he's gone. Meanwhile, Nois Lorenia has uh, got a pretty good run there. Pretty good run. Is he going to make it? Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. War over. But at least you could see just how lethal it is from taking a shot like that. Again, the surprise is more important than that clean kinematic hit that we saw on the other ship. All right, hopefully this video has been helpful. Again, I just you know kind of shown out kind of neat little things that you could do, kind of common concerns with naval warfare. This applies to submarines, by the way. If you can get in the baffle of a submarine and take a free shot, that submarine's gone. If you get a no shot, the only way you're going to get a clean no shot is if it's going fast at you. And of course, the beam is it's it's a tough shot. But against something like a merchant or like a free shot on a carrier, it works great. Enjoy.